Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2021. I'm playing around with a landscape and there's, you know, there's just a lot of tools in On One. I've been talking about them in, in a number of videos, but there's great masking, there's great tools, and I found a couple of cool things that really helped me kind of pop this landscape. So here's the shot. This is Moraine Lake up in Canada. It's just stunning. It's just gorgeous, but photo's kind of dark. It needs some work, so I'm going to work on that today. I'm going to start here in the Develop tab. I'm going to give it a tiny bit of contrast. I'm going to pull those highlights down. I don't want that sky to be too bright. Um, I'm going to pull the mid-tones up, uh, and I'm going a pretty significant way here because I really want to bring that photo to life. It is a bit too dark, so mid-tones and shadows are going to help me quite a bit here. So let me go ahead and get that. So something about like that. Now that's pretty bright, but we're going to we're going to take care of, you know, we're going to balance it all out. Let me just say that. So uh, I'm going to pull the blacks down just a tiny bit, create a little bit more of that contrast there. So far, I think, you know, it, it's an improvement. It's brighter. You can actually see the lake now uh, and some of the stuff in the distance, but in the past you couldn't. And of course, the foreground has way better visibility than it did. So We've uh, you know, come a long way with a couple of sliders, but I've got a few things I wanna do here. The first thing here is a, uh, a local adjustment on the, uh, on the sky. So I'm gonna start adjust that. Let me see here. Uh, I'm gonna take the highlights down. That's gonna be about like a 10. I'm gonna take this structure down about a 50. And that's just a personal preference, really. I just like kind of smoother skies. And saturation and vibrance are gonna go up just a tiny bit, like a five each or something like that. Okay, five, six, whatever it is. So now I wanna drop a gradient mask and I want to use what's called linear bottom. So I'm gonna drop that here. I'm gonna tilt it uh, so that I can kind of cover that sky area. I'm gonna pull this down. I'm gonna change the adjustment there. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna make that big of a gradient zone. I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit. I'm gonna pull it about like that. And if I show you the mask, there it is. It's basically applying across the sky. I'm gonna go ahead and hide that, and I'm gonna hit Z to hide the masking tool. So there we go. Uh, let me show you what I've done. If you look at this sky, there it is before, and there it is now. It's not a big difference. It's kind of hard to see, but um, I've made those adjustments. If I wanted to further refine that, now I have the mask in place, I could just go do that. So I could do more negative structure if I really wanted to smooth it out. You know, I could change saturation. I could adjust the highlights, you know, whatever it is. So um, I'm fine with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next one, but quick and easy to isolate that. The second local adjustment, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, invert that as well so I can see this. I'm gonna take the exposure up about a 0.1, something like that. And this one is gonna be a structure of about a 35 or you know something like that. And what I wanna do here is do the same thing with a gradient mask. This time, however, is gonna be linear top. I'm gonna to drop it right in here. And all I wanna do is just kinda of pop those rocks. So let me adjust that, zone a little bit, pull that up there. And my mask looks something like that. So if I turn this off, there's the before and there's the current state. A little bit brighter. I could adjust that more if I wanted to. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is just leave it alone. But if I need to come back later, I remember that I have that mask in place. I can just come in here and further refine that if I need to. I am actually gonna move that up just a little bit. Hit Z on my keyboard to hide that. I'm good with that local adjustment. Basically a little bit of structure and a little bit of an exposure bump on those rocks in the foreground just to crisp them up and brighten them. Okay, and one more local adjustment. And this is the fun one, my friends. I, I love this uh, tool here. So I'm gonna hit invert. And what I'm working on, what I really wanna work on is that center section of the photo. But the thing is, on photos like this, it's like, I don't really want the stuff above or below to be affected. I just kinda want that center. Well, there's actually a way to do that. So if you get that adjustable gradient and you go in here and click over here on shape, there's a thing called a reflected gradient. And this is super cool. If you drop that in, you can see it's basically, it'll allow you to adjust the inner section and then not the outer section. And that's really what I wanna do. I wanna come in here and make some adjustments to kind of that inner section of the photo. So this reflected gradient really allows me to do that. You can tilt it as much as you need to. You can increase or decrease these gradient zones, uh, which I'm doing a little bit of here. And as you can see, they adjust separately. So you can adjust a tighter gradient zone in one area and a little bit broader one in another, as well as increase the entire area of that reflected gradient. So basically, you're not affecting 
well, let me invert it, in fact, because what I want to do, I'm going to invert. Sorry, I should have done that first. So what I want to do is impact the stuff in the center. Let me reset exposure and not impact the stuff on the outer uh, side, uh, you know, on the uh, upper portion and the below portion. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to increase exposure a little bit. And I'm going to add a little bit of contrast. Midtones are going to come up just ever so slightly. And the temperature is actually going to go down. I want to make it a little bit bluer because I'm basically affecting the lake. And that center section is a lot of water. And I'm going to add a little bit of vibrance. I don't want to overdo it. The water really is that blue. It's insanely gorgeous. But I don't want to overdo it. I want my edit to be, you know, based in reality. Uh, so if I show you the mask, remember, white reveals black conceals. So this reflective gradient, such a cool idea. I love that this tool is here. Uh, basically allows me to edit that stuff in white, not the stuff in black. So if I turn that off, you can see the photo. Now if I turn this off, there it is before and there it is after. And I actually think I'm going to tighten up this a little bit because I don't want too much blue on those mountains. I want to do more of that in the, uh, in the lake. And that's another beautiful thing. I can just come back and adjust that mask. So uh, there it is what it looks like now. And if I turn that back off. So now if I turn off the entire adjustment, you can see the center section of the photo is being impacted. There it is before this adjustment. And there it is with a refl reflected gradient little bit brighter, a little bit bluer, things like that. Super cool tool. I love that. I just think that's, I just think it's a great idea. So works really well, I think, in situations like this where you have a center section that you kind of want to make an adjustment to. Came in super handy here. And now I'm finished with local adjustments. I'm going to pop over to effects and do some more stuff. The first one is my old friend Tone Enhancer. And here I'm going to give the exposure just a little bit of a reduction. It's a little too bright overall, you know, which is fine. Easy enough to fix. I'm going to add a tiny bit of contrast, and these are global edits. So in other words, they apply to the entire photo. The highlights are coming down a little bit. I just don't want to overdo how bright that is. And I'm going to pull shadows down like a very minor amount. This is basically just kind of an overall controlling the light and contrast. There it is before, a little bit brighter, and there it is after, a little bit less bright. In fact, I'm going to pull those shadows back uh, just a little bit and pull that contrast down just a tad, and maybe pop those highlights back up a little bit. I do that a lot. I'll edit a photo, think it looks great, start making a video, and then change my mind. Hey, man, you know, that's just how it works sometimes with art, right? So there it is before, tone enhancer, and there it is after, a little bit of overall light control. Uh, and now what I want to do is go add a little bit of dynamic contrast. And this is a tool I've used in countless videos where I just come in and kind of pop some details. And uh, if you haven't figured it out, there are some spots here where a little bit of pop of detail would look kind of nice. So I'm kind of bringing those up a little bit. I'm going to go into masking and I've got the perfect brush. And all I want to do is just, oops, let me invert. There we go. You got to catch those things. I'm in paint in mode and I've got a black mask, which means nothing is showing. So now I'm just going to come in and paint this perfect brush and this dynamic contrast adjustment into these rocky areas. And the perfect brush is great at that because it helps me control where my edits are going. So there's that. And I'm going to hit it down here in the bottom as well. Really want to bring those uh, rocks in the foreground to life and a little bit of those bushes and just kind of crank up that detail a little bit. Let me see how that looks. Click on view. You can always come back and further refine that if you need to. Generally speaking, this is about what I wanted to do. You may want to take your time and go a little bit slower, but Perfect Brush is perfect, as the name implies, for that kind of stuff. So this dynamic contrast, I just wanted to pop the crunch in those mountains. The ones in the distance were a little too soft, and the ones in the foreground I wanted to crank up as well. So if I turn this off, you can see it's a little bit softer there in the distance and a little bit softer here in the foreground. And now they both um, have popped a little bit. And notice they get a little bit brighter. So let me turn that off. There it is one more time before and after added a little crunch it also seems to brighten those a little bit which i think works just fine here okay and before i leave dynamic contrast i'm going to copy that mask i'm going to use that one more time on those same parts of the photo another great thing you've already made a mask no sense in repeating it or recreating it just copy it so i've got dynamic contrast i'm going to add a filter i'm going to add sunshine and i'm going to come in here to the masking menu and click paste so now if I view, you can see my mask has come over. And what I want to do here is just add, I'm going to take the amount down. So maybe like a 25, but I want to increase the warmth a bit. So maybe go to about 50 or so there. And so basically just added this sunshine filter across the mountains and a little bit in the foreground. 
took down the amount, but I wanted to pop the warmth a little bit. So it's just creating a little bit more warmth because it was a sunset and that sun is out of frame to the right, kind of hitting those mountains on that left side. So if I turn this off, that's what it looked like before and after. Now they're a little bit brighter, a tiny bit warmer, and I got a little bit of that in the foreground as well. I don't know, it just kind of worked. The other thing I think about images like this is uh, uh, yellow and blue are complementary colors. They're on opposite sides of the color wheel. And so there's a fair amount of yellow here and a lot of blue. So I'm trying to play off that co color contrast because they're complementary. I think they look, uh, you know, they are complementary. So they look really good together. And so I wanted to bring that up a little bit. So that's uh, what I did a little bit of with a sunshine filter. One more time, a little bit darker, a little bit less warm, and now a little bit brighter in those areas, a little bit more warmth, and that allowed me to kind of finish off this landscape. I think we really brought this one to life, my friends. Let me hit Z to get out of that, and I'm gonna hit the preview. That's what we started with. I mean, it was quite dark. This was actually a, an exposure from a set of brackets, so it's a, a darker one, but I tend to shoot my brackets when I'm shooting HDR brackets a little bit darker anyway. So easy enough to fix in software, as you can see, especially if you shoot raw files, and this is one. But there it is before, and there it is current state. It pops quite a bit. It really has come to life, much brighter, much crisper. And if you look at the before and after the sliding window, I mean, just a massive impact on the photo. Now that I've done that, I actually think I'm going to go to Tone Enhancer and tone down, no pun intended, the overall exposure just a little bit and maybe reduce the contrast a tad, maybe pull up the blacks and the shadows a little bit. I feel like it's a little bit contrasty. Maybe that looks a little bit better. Let me turn off Tone Enhancer. I think that's enhanced a little bit. That's the thing. I mean, I could just play for hours, to be honest, just to try to fine tune my photos. And I always finish a photo and then look at it and think, ah, oh, I should have done this. Anyway, you get the point. The idea here was using some of the tools, especially like that reflected gradient that I used over here on the local adjustment, just a super powerful, cool thing you can use, especially if you have a center area of a photo that you really want to enhance. I think it worked well here. And then some of the custom brushing, like with the perfect brush to adjust the details here in the distant mountains, as well as in the foreground, just lots of different tools. That's how I really brought this landscape to life and I think gave it a nice little pop. Hope it gives you some ideas, my friends. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. You guys take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you soon and adios.